Good afternoon, my name is Leonardo Leiva. Good afternoon, my name is Su Teng Poon. I hold a um, real bowl from Tulane School of Architecture in New Orleans. And I hold a BS in Neuroscience from the University of Minnesota. And Leonardo is in lighting design in... UPC in Catalonia. In UPA. UPC. UPC. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, first and foremost, we'd like to thank you for inviting us here and for listening to our proposal for this. I recognize it's a proposal for the school in Yantalo, Peru, based on the premise of a knowledge and learning on a, as a cumulative experience and being able to build upon a experiences that we've encountered before in light of the new ones. Yeah, this has been a very meaningful project to us, and we are very honored to be here. So, so we like to start with this. Yeah, with to to start we with, we would like to talk yeah. about. How do we turn? Change slides. Do we press a button? Or? Yeah, they should be in the advancing down there. If not, then put the poles out right. Right here. Okay. In the yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So we have this quote, architects may like to rationalize the variables of design, but people largely perceive buildings emotionally through the senses. For us uh, as architecture students with a non-architectural background, we're currently exposed to new ideas and theoretical readings of voc formal vocabularies that uh, sometimes might, might have seen inaccessible before and would have been otherwise if we weren't students of architecture. But this quote has served as an anchor for us to come back and realize that the the power of architecture really lies in its, its, in its accessibility to people as an experiential device that maybe we're thinking of, of ideas that are, are inaccessible, but the experience is what really gives like power and connection through architecture. So that's something that we kept in mind in this project. So we are very interested in the process of accumulating experience. We are um, in our lifetime, we are constantly expanding our knowledge consciousness by building upon, re um, revisiting, comparing, and reframing known relationship with new encounter. So our intent in this project is to create a space where children could begin to learn more about their environment through interacting with it, through touching it, and to create architecture that would enrich this experience. And first of all, we looked at the sensitive period in child development. We see that as a continuous process where you would accumulate different experience to create a greater whole, which is a more developed neural map. And that is informed by awareness and memory of senses, emotions, feelings, and experience. Since we are since we're looking at sensitive periods in child development as a continu continuous process that you're building upon, it was clear from the onset that part of our design had to have a certain constancy to continue with that, but we saw that the opportunity to, to enrich or elaborate in this constancy was gonna be through, through design devices or strategies. So for that, we kind of look, we developed a toolkit approach that's on the top right that is our, it's, it aims to uh, merge design strategies with neuroscience or emotional and f uh, responses. So part of those are endophenotypes by, by Jack Pansip. Uh, so we're trying to relate what a strategy, what could be a multi-sensory goal, and what emotion or feeling that could uh, bring out in a user or a child. And that's part of a toolkit that we started to use to kind of elaborate more on the design that we're going to propose. Yeah, the toolkit would be a basic framework of how our sensory experience could relate to actual devi design devices and how that could inform architecture. Sorry. So when we started studying the site, we started thinking about scales too and how we experience the world since, since childhood at different scales we know our home first, we know our built environment, we know our landscape around it. So you can see this terrain map on the on the left is uh, 
the the black dot is where Yantalo is and it's surrounded by it's a valley surrounded by a mountainous region so it offers a lot of uh, signals or symbols or wayfinding devices especially what we see on the right which is called the, the El Morro it's a, a, a elevation landmark and so we wanted to to think of the scale this is something we wanted to maintain present that in an environment where there is more space than built form we wanted to carry out carry that throughout our our design and keep the keep in mind what's around at a big scale even though you're occupying you're occupying a small scale and so the site that we selected it's directly opposite from the clinic and the way that the reason we chose this is we wanted it to be connected to the main road and also for it to be to have a visual connection when you're traveling down the main road and continuing on to the site plan so as you go down the main road the first thing that you would see is a community hall which is um, where it's number one and we are continuing with the idea of El Moro so it's a visual landmark where for the community and also for the children in the school and right next to co the community hall would be a courtyard where it's next to service spaces, which are the restrooms. And continuing on Sorry. with the sequence is the teacher's lounge. And we located the classroom units right next to the teacher's lounge. Um, the classroom units for K to three units right next to the teacher's lounge so that it's uh, more easily accessible for the teacher. And directly um, opposite from the teacher's lounge are the unit for the nine to 12, because we, we see that as um, providing an opportunity for more freedom and independence. And it also signals a progression of um, taking up the responsibility of taking care of the younger kids now. And this arrangement creates a large but still enclosed playing space that we think would be very useful for sports activities and general outdoor activities. So to be specific about the units, we started by programming a 30 by 30 foot uh, cube uh, as we played around with the siding too. And because this clinic is gonna, uh, the school is gonna be built in in phases. We, that's something that we wanted to incorporate since the beginning of the design. And so each uh, cube was for one classroom unit, and the second represents its future growth. What we did is like by shifting the cubes on the side, we, we created two two spaces, one in the front and one in the back, that corresponds to our big idea of site. The one in front is facing the community, and the back one is a more <laughs> private one that faces the, the landscape visible throughout the west to the south. And on the right, you can see a diagram about, so the cube, how we wanted to variate it and keep also the idea of the, the connection to the envir environment to the inside and to also enri enrich the idea of a cube. We thought that the side that opened to the community had to have a special relationship not only visual but also to the ground so we we proceeded to carve a space that helped differentiate that space but also helped in creating two different areas in the inside the cube one that is more attuned for not informal learning but maybe more spontane spontaneous learning that happens in in the round carved area that it was produced and the part behind would be more of a concentrated learning area and this is like the specific unit to which we started applying the the toolkit that we developed. So this would be a unit for the K to three. Uh, this is a multi simulation image, multi stimulation, and it deals with the uh, first years of the sensory development in which young children are absorbing a lot of knowledge. And we're also thinking about the the toolkits of orth orthogonality and curving spaces and what is tactile and the for, like softness and contour of shapes. We also have a signed fenestration, which uh, is key to the cognitive skills of recognizing symbols that, like Dr. Vasquez was mentioning in the clinic, 
color was used here we're proposing punctures and here is the sample for a unit for the 428 this unit is more about what we call control to learning to control all the uh, multi-sensory experiences that you were trying to understand in the previous before and this includes emotional control it includes social knowledge and so in the seek the more spontaneous area where the curved space is now become becomes a library f where kids can start to access knowledge by themselves they're like uh, becoming better at reading and writing and also hopefully by the time they reach around the eighth grade they can also start learning about control of resources so out taking the scale outside of the personal body to the to the nat to the natural learning about water collection in a region where it rains a lot learning about n uh, natural ventilation and devices that also uh, go back to the, the phenotype of care it's not also care about oneself it's care about the environment and bringing all those skills together and this is a sample of a 9 to 12 unit this one is more about mature interaction and it's also about so we have here what we call kind of like a, a forum or a stage where collaboration independence but also the acceptance of the and development of points of view from others is stimulated and it's uh, the unit that was more separated from all the units also has a relationship with the rest of the space that's more independent and um, in this section you could in this section you could see how um, the idea of having a visual landmark and the idea of a change in scale so the unit on the left it's a community hall and it's much larger than the teachers lounge on the right and also um, the device of using a pitch roof to open up the view out to the community or to open up the view to the um, southwest region where the mountains are and in the top section we are looking at we are looking from the road right at the complex and you can see how the units are consistent but and in the bottom section you could see the slight variation in the openings on the wall we use that as a signaling device for kids to easily understand where they are at and also um, the slight change in skill of the unit would be would provide so in the environment where each units are pretty much constant a small change would be amplified and that would be a good guide for children to navigate in the complex and this is just an idea of material that we are thinking of so for the K-3 units, we are thinking of soft material on the wall where kids could touch them and really engage their senses. And we want to use material that are familiar to kids so that they are not in a completely strange environment. And to do that, we are thinking of corrugated metal roofing. We are thinking of wood, um, wooden screen, wooden platform. So these are just some images of a, of a model print and closing images to look at the space, mostly the, the community hall re opening to the, to the space, the private spaces in the back and the plan view. And that uh, resumes our project. And the next step that we envision in this project is going is actually developing the fine tuning, the, the toolkit as a, an approach for n architects and neurosciences that has a potential to grow, also has a potential to be studied in, as it is implemented and occupied throughout the space and could develop into something more specific as new knowledge is created in both of the fields and that as the buildings could be used and how each could inform the other. Thank you very much. Thank you.